Chung helped design the crew cabin of the doomed space shuttle Columbia and tests the fuselages of spacecraft. Important work, but doesn't make you a millionaire. Yet Chung has a large amount of money at his disposal. He's making about $60,000 a year, yet he has purchased multiple businesses, land, he has built a house on the land, paid for it with cash. It, it doesn't add up for how much he's making. The FBI begins to monitor Chung's movements. Chung leaves his house, carrying what will turn out to be diplomatic pouches. He drives 400 miles to San Francisco and pays a visit to the Chinese consulate. That is not normal behavior for a structural engineer. What is Chung carrying in those diplomatic pouches? In the dead of night, agents look through his trash cans. What they discover, slipped in between pages of Chinese language newspapers, are highly sensitive technological documents from Rockwell and Boeing. The documents have got some letters like OV and STS. Well, that stands for Orbiting Vehicle and Space Transportation System. It's shuttle technology. The spy hunters make their move. They confront Chang. The Chinese engineer flatly denies that he is passing space secrets to the Chinese. The FBI knows that they have to crack this guy. The investigators have evidence. A letter addressed to Chung from a top aviation official in China. It actually says that the Chinese government plans to, to build an Earth orbiting space station, and they want Chung to gather any relevant technological information. But this is America. According to the letter of the law, the feds need irrefutable evidence that Chung has passed on secrets, and they can't raid embassies or start searching diplomatic bags. While the letter asks Chung to steal secrets, the FBI still needs to find proof that he's actually done it. FBI agents search the home of suspected Chinese spy, Greg Chung, but they find nothing. The house has been scrubbed clean, and there are no technical documents relating to space science. They're not finding anything really inside the house, but then they discover something under the house. One of the agents finds a hidden door under the deck at the back of the house. It leads to a secret room under the building. What they find inside changes everything. There's floor-to-ceiling shelves in this room just filled with documents. He had over a quarter million documents sitting in a crawl space underneath his home. This was a, a massive dump of material. The hoard of material contains details on some of America's most classified technology, including the Delta IV booster rocket used for launching men into space, a massive boon for China's ambitions to reach the stars. It covered everything from space shuttle systems to rocket technology, military hardware. By the time he was wrapped up, he had been doing this for over 30 years. FBI agents finally arrest Chung, and he is brought to trial. It's discovered he had amassed over $3 million from the Chinese government. Chung is the first American citizen to be convicted under the Economic Espionage Act, and this is a major success for the FBI. Chung gets 15 years in jail, but the extent of his treachery may have put China ahead in the space race. It was a bit of a hollow victory because he had already done the damage. And the Chinese had already benefited from all of that effort. China appears poised to achieve some kind of milestone in space before the US does. It would kind of be like a, a Sputnik moment relived. August 2017, tech billionaire Yuri Milner spends $100 million of his fortune searching for alien signals in space. Today, he strikes gold. 
his Breakthrough Listen project detects 15 strange signals coming from the Auriga star system. It's basically like a beacon of radio energy rippling outwards across the universe, kind of like a stone makes ripples in a pond. The signals stand out as distinctly artificial. It repeats over and over. And that's exactly the sort of thing that we would look for in a signal from ET. Now scientists face a massive challenge. If this is a message, what does it mean? And how can we possibly decipher an alien code? Science fiction makes it look easy. We're from Mars. Don't be afraid. On TV, you know, the aliens always speak idiomatic English. I'm usually better than the English spoken by my relatives, right? But in, in reality, that's not likely to be the case. They're not going to speak English. Whatever message may be hidden in the mysterious radio signal will be much harder to decipher than any human language. We have to be prepared when we intercept alien languages, not just an alien version of English, but a totally different dimension of sound, sights, smells, colors that aliens may use. NASA has poured millions into researching the ways animals receive and relay information as a first step towards trying to understand how aliens might communicate. Even on the planet Earth, animals communicate in a much different way than we communicate. Take a bat, for example. If you could somehow breed a bat that becomes intelligent, they would talk to you with sonar. If you were to talk to a race of birds, they would communicate with melodies or take a dog. Dogs think in terms of smells. Thousands of smells drifting in and out of their consciousness. That's how they would communicate. The space agency's largest investment has been in an attempt to communicate with dolphins, the nearest thing we have on Earth to intelligent aliens. They aren't terrestrial. They don't live on the land. These are aquatic creatures, but they're incredibly intelligent. Three dolphins, including a particularly clever one called Peter, are brought to a specially built submerged laboratory in the Caribbean. Perhaps someday we'll understand what they're saying. There was such a feeling of optimism that the scientists dubbed themselves the Order of the Dolphin. They believed that dolphins could one day take a seat in the UN and represent their entire species to the world and even make a contribution to world affairs. But after three years of hard work, it all comes to nothing. By putting his mouth halfway out of the water, Peter did learn to say something that sounded like, hello, Margaret. Whether Peter really knew what that meant or not, we don't know. The team run up against a fundamental problem of cross-species communication, which makes cracking newly received alien code seem almost impossible. They're never gonna be able to speak good English or any other language. That's just not part of their brain structure. If in the end we can't speak with dolphins, who are biologically very similar, what's the chance we're going to be able to speak with aliens from a different civilization? 